Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you this morning to St. Matthew's United Methodist Church. My name is Adam. I'm one of the pastors on staff. We are so excited to have you here today for our lessons and carol service. If you are a guest with us, special word of welcome to you. Thank you for being here with us. There in your pew, you'll find a Connect card that you can fill out and drop in the offering plate as it goes around. And then at the very end of our service, if you go out the back sanctuary doors and to the left, there's a welcome table there. We would love to greet you. This service is being live streamed on Facebook, so if you're watching online with us or if you're here in person and want to hop online, please share this service as a way of inviting your friends and family to join in worship with us today. Uh, just a few quick announcements, especially pertaining to uh, Advent and Christmas Eve services. Uh, we do have our longest night service coming up this week, Thursday at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Remember, that is a joint service between our church and Harvey Brown Presbyterian and Beargrass Christian just to make space for uh, all the different mixture of feelings that we can have this time of year, especially if the holidays are difficult. Uh, we invite you to come out and join us for that time of prayer. You see there our Christmas Eve schedule. Uh, we do still have morning worship that morning, but it is one combined service at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary. And then that afternoon and evening, we have our normal uh, schedule of Christmas Eve services at 4.30 is paper bag, and then 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. Uh, candlelight Christmas Eve services. So please make plans to come out and join us on Christmas Eve. Uh, just also want to announce that it's a similar schedule in the morning on New Year's Eve as well. So we will have one service at 10 a.m. on New Year's Eve, which also falls on a Sunday, only we will be in Gordon Hall that morning and we will have brunch as well. So come out and join us uh, for some breakfast and worship as well, 10 a.m. New Year's Eve in Gordon Hall. Uh, last but not least, uh, we've been calling attention to our flowers throughout Advent and the live flowers that have been given. Uh, the flowers this morning are given in memory of Angela Ramirez, uh, who is the sister of Martha Royce. And so we want to remember her and continue to pray for the Royce family today. I think those are all the announcements we have today. Again, thank you uh, for being here and worshiping with us today. Let's prepare our hearts for worship with our opening prelude.
Please stand for the call to worship. When God's people were surrounded by hardship, suffering, and grief, Isaiah proclaimed, the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will, they will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. We come today as people who are surrounded by suffering and grief, and yet the Spirit hovers among us, tending and anointing, inspiring freedom where there is captivity, declaring blessing in places the world has cursed, and igniting fierce joy where mourning and heartache prevail. We, we wait, wait as people who experience hardship and pain, pain, yet we are called to witness to the persistent joy that sustains our life as God's people. We light, these, we light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, just peace, and fierce joy. May our lives shine with the fierce, tenacious joy of the light who lives in our hearts as we wait and work for the coming of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. As you are able, please remain standing for a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, 
and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. seated. This morning we lit the candle on the Advent wreath for fierce joy. And I want to invite us to think about today as kind of a working definition that fierce joy is a joy that can go through the stuff of life, uh, through the roller coaster of ups and downs that we can experience, and still be a joy that is resilient. Uh, this weekend, just yesterday, I had the honor and privilege of leading the celebration of life for our oldest member, uh, Mr. Forrest Bauer, who passed at 105 years old. Every time I went to visit Forrest, uh, it was one of those situations where I came away being the one blessed because he was genuinely one of the kindest, warmest, wisest, most gracious, most joyful people I had ever met. And the thing that I love so much about Forrest was that you knew that he had experienced a whole lot of life in over 100 years, right? You don't make it to 105 without going through a lot of ups and downs. He had been a soldier in World War II. He had been a farmer, a teacher, an employee at the Federal Land Bank. Throughout his life, he had been a son, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather. Things had changed a lot for him in 105 years. One of the stories they told yesterday that I love so much was that Forrest actually went to Ohio State University on a full scholarship. He got a full ride, and that full scholarship gave him $60 a year uh, to pay everything he needed for college. You have to imagine that he had seen a lot and experienced a lot of the joys and struggles of life. And I bring this up to say that for Forrest, his joy wasn't naive or Pollyannish or fake. In fact, it was battle-tested and it was found to be resilient. And I think for all of us, as you broaden that, we all know the difference between what's real and what's fake, what's tested and what's not, right? It's the difference between asking newlyweds if they love each other and asking the golden anniversary couple the same question. It's the difference between asking a first-year teacher their philosophy of education and asking a retiring teacher the same question. It's the difference for me if when I said I love Jesus and felt called to ministry at 20 years old and me saying I love Jesus and feel called to ministry at <clears throat> years old, right? It's different when you have a joy that has gone through the stuff of life and it is still there. That is fierce joy. In our scripture reading today, Isaiah comes proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. And you know many of these verses, it's all about good news for the poor and healing broken hearts. It's freedom for the captives and comfort for those who are mourning. It's restoring all that's been devastated. But we have to realize that for Israel, 
This was not naive, Pollyannish, fake joy either, because the Israelites had been through some stuff. And it wasn't totally a joyful, grand homecoming for them either. We've talked about over the last few weeks how after they had been defeated by the Babylonians, they had been living as exiles. They had come home to find their homes, their temple, completely demolished. It's not to a people who had everything go their way that Isaiah is speaking, but to people whose hearts were broken, who were living in poverty and ruins that Isaiah says, to them I will bestow a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. It's like this seedling sprouting up from the dirt And God is inviting his people to see how joy will spring up in the midst of lives that were in shambles. If Israel was going to have joy, it was going to be a battle-tested one. Joy in the midst of all they were facing, and that is fierce joy. Bring us to the season of Advent, and especially as we anticipate our celebration of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, uh, I think of Diedrich Bonhoeffer's famous words about the joy of God. He says, the joy of God has gone through the poverty of the manger. It's gone through the agony of the cross. That's why it's invincible, irrefutable. It does not deny anguish when it's there, but it finds God in the midst of it. This is a joy that sustains us even in those moments where maybe you're looking around wondering, where in the world is God in all of this? This is a joy that can be present as tears roll down our cheeks, as doubts swirl in our minds, or losses come in wave after wave. This is the joy that the Apostle Paul talks about in 1 Thessalonians 5 when he commands, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. You may be thinking to yourself, well, how in the world can Paul say that? How can joy be commanded? Well, he's talking about a joy that isn't based in circumstances. It's not based on our emotions or what's going on inside of us, but it's based on who God is in our lives. So I want to invite you to think about today, who are the most joyful people you know in your life? Maybe you could even have your face, their face on your mind as you think about these next points. Who are those most joyful people? In my experience, they usually are not people whose lives have been all sunshine, rainbows, and puppy dog tails. But instead, usually they are people who have faced the painful brokenness of life and have still learned to experience God's abiding presence, God's unconditional love, and God's amazing grace. And I want to invite us today to think about how this is the joy that we actually have the privilege of sharing with others. Just as Isaiah was anointed to preach good news, we all have good news to share. Earlier in Isaiah 52, the prophet declares, how beautiful are the feet of those who share good news. Now, we aren't TV preachers who promise that everything's going to go your way if you just believe. But instead, we're those who were sent to others that have maybe facing the difficulties of life to remind them that God is with them. We are sent to tell others that however they've gone astray, God is waiting with open arms to welcome them home. We are sent to tell others that even if they feel like they're standing in ruins, if their lives are in shambles, nothing can separate them from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so as we prepare our hearts for our lessons and carols today, as our choir faithfully stood through that entire meditation, may we be people of battle-tested, resilient, grounded in the love of God, joy. May we be people of fierce joy. Let's pray together today. Lord, maybe we are here today and we would say, that our joy isn't at all maybe what we feel like it should be or what you're inviting us to experience. Maybe we would say that we don't feel like we have a lot of joy at all. We pray, God, that you would give us a joy that isn't about what we're going through in life, 
a joy that isn't about how we feel or our emotions or what's going on inside of us, but a joy that is grounded in our relationship with you. God, your joy endured it all. You came as a baby in a manger. You died as a criminal on a cross. You knelt down to wash the dusty feet of your disciples. And over and over again, even as you lowered yourself and, and experienced the brokenness of life, your joy remained steadfast. And God, we ask that the same would be true in us. Give us eyes to see your presence within us and around us, O oh God, even in the midst of all that we're facing today. And God, we pray that even for the remainder of this worship service, as we hear your word proclaimed, as we sing together, we pray, God, that you would restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Lord, bind our hearts together now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We want to invite you to please stand as we sing our processional hymn together.
be seated. The first lesson. God tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise and that the seed of woman will bruise the serpent's head. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the, from the tree? which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put in between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree, about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thanks be to God. second lesson. God promises to Abraham that by his descendants all the nations of the earth will obtain blessings. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, said the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. 
and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Thanks be to God. The third lesson from Isaiah 9, verses 2 and 6 through 7. The prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God.
fourth lesson. The peace that Christ will bring is foreshown. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God. At this time, we'll invite the ushers to come forward and we'll continue to worship by giving of our tithes and offerings today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together. God, we thank you today that every good and perfect gift has come from your hand. And we thank you especially today for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, the source of our joy and our strength. Or we pray that you would bless our tithes and our offerings today, that they would be used for your kingdom and your glory. And help us to be a people who work for that peace and that restoration that we just heard about when the knowledge and glory of the Lord fills the whole earth. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen.
Fifth, the fifth lesson, the angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. Infant holy, infant holy, for his birth our cattle stall, oxen lowing, little lowing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Swift are we king, angels singing, no else ring. Christ the babe is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning dew. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, greet the morrow, Christ the babe was born for you. Sixth lesson, Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Thanks be to God.
the shepherds go to the manger. In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good tidings of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see the, this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. Thanks be to God. Lesson, the wise men are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen as it, at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. 
On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Oh, 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 seated. The ninth lesson, St. John unfolds the great mystery of incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, children born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
We want to thank you again for worshiping with us this morning. We want to thank the choir and the musicians for all their hard work on this year's lessons and carol service. Uh, a couple quick reminders. Uh, first, remember uh, 10 o'clock worship services the next two Sundays. If you show up at 8.30, you're automatically in the choir. Um, so uh, 10 o'clock worship next two weeks. Also remember, if you're a guest with us, if you go out the back sanctuary doors and to the left, we would love to welcome you and greet you there. Would you stand together with me as you're able for our benediction today? May God empower you to go and be people of fierce joy. May you trust in the Lord that the joy of the Lord would be your strength. And may you go to share good news of God's great joy with others. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you and have a great Sunday.